Good morning. I'm on the Upper Newtonards Road and I'm standing just outside Dundonald Cemetery. Belfast Corporation bought 45 acres up here uh, on the Upper Newtonards Road uh, for the princely sum of £5,600. Well, the first burial took place in um, 1905 and you'll notice just on the wee green plaque there on the office side of the office that it's a Commonwealth War Grave um, cemetery. Lots and lots of war graves scattered around uh, throughout the cemetery. And in fact, there's a massive big war memorial uh, dominating the central pathway here. And I think you can just see it. There's 76 Commonwealth uh, burials um, that are uh, associated with the First World War. First World War war graves. There's 76 of those uh, guys who were killed in the 1914-18 First World War. And there's 88 uh, Second World War war graves. I'm just coming on round here. This is interesting here because this shows you a wee map of the actual graveyard. I'm standing down here and the graveyard is, is labelled the central uh, avenue straight down there is labelled A, B, C, D, E, F and it's numbered 1, 2, 3. So if you are told that your grave plot that you're looking for is in the E4, you just go A, B, C, D, E and then you go along and you come to A4. So that uh, shows the locations of all the plots, which is handy. Just standing in the uh, central drop off area of the cemetery and doing a 180 degree turnaround. Well, nearly 360 degree turnaround. Just decided. Quite a number of graves in here, not too sure how many. But there's no new uh, graves being opened up. Um, there are family plots and they are taking in more graves but uh, this, this graveyard is largely uh, full. I've just uh, come up to the B3 section of the uh, cemetery and this is uh, quite a significant uh, grave here. This is the grave of Sir Thomas and Lady Sir, Sir Thomas Dixon and Lady Edith Dixon. Um, Sir Thomas Dixon um, was High Sheriff of County Antrim and he was Lord Lieutenant of Belfast and he, uh, he was 1868 through to 1950 and he was 82 when he died. And Lady Edith uh, Stuart Dixon, 1871 to 1964, she was, uh, she was 93 uh, when she died. She's a uh, dame of the British Empire because she worked with the wounded uh, of World War I. And of course, uh, uh, Lady uh, Edith uh, donated uh, the, uh, 
the estate, their estate, uh, to the people of Belfast, and that is now uh, known, of course, as Lady or Sir Thomas and Lady Dixon uh, Park, over uh, uh, beside the Lagan. So quite a significant. I'm very surprised actually to see them buried uh, over here. Uh, I wouldn't have expected. I wouldn't have expected that. I would have thought they'd been maybe over in the city cemetery or uh, I just didn't think this. I'm wondering why they were buried here but there you go and it's actually only whenever you come into this graveyard that you realise that it's quite a substantial graveyard I have moved across this is the second avenue in and it's it's uh, it's big. And I've reached uh, the high point of the cemetery here. This is the cross of sacrifice. Um, which dominates the Central Avenue here. Um, it's of grey limestone, it's a, a war memorial obviously, it's five metres tall, it's a, embedded with a large bronze Excalibur sword on this side and on the other side I believe, uh, forming a cross shape at the top. The Cross of Sacrifice is, and there's a plaque, and it says, well it's not a plaque but it's carved into the uh, the concrete. Cross of Sacrifice is one in design and in tension with those that have been set up in France and Belgium and other places around the world where our dead of the Great War are led to rest. Their name liveth forever. And the cemetery goes on. Yeah, it's got a big Excalibur on the other side as well. And this is the high point of the cemetery. It's, it's, it's massive. And you, you wouldn't realise that actually from just driving past it. It just extends back. Must be thousands of people buried in here. And there's where I come in down there. I'm looking out across a different part of the cemetery here. I'm looking out towards uh, Dundonald and that white building up on the top there, away in the distance, that's the secret garden. Uh, that we would go to for coffee and uh, to buy plants. So this place, this place is massive. And this area down here, sections A and D would uh, probably hold the oldest graves. That's uh, down there on the right that I found uh, the uh, Thomas and Lady Dixon grave. So I'm going to have another wee Jeff Duke and see if I can find any of the other folks. There's quite a few notables in here actually. Um, as well as the uh, Dixons there's uh, Dr. Thomas uh, Fleming Stevenson Fulton and he founded Fleming Fulton uh, School. And then there's uh, a number of others. There's Oscar Huron and he was a famous gypsy horse dealer. And then there's Sir Fred Ernest Rebeck, 1877 to 1964, and he was Harden Wolf chairman. And 
And then there's John McCandless, uh, Mia, a managing director of the Belfast Rope Works. And then there's John Curry, uh, 1861 to 1943, and he was uh, a famous landscape artist. And they're probably all in here somewhere, but I would need, I would, I would need a few days to dand around here. And I've just found the uh, the rabbit grave, family grave, and there's uh, Sir Frederick Ernest Rebeck, the uh, chairman of Hard and Wolf. for about 30 years. Here I have found the, uh, the Fulton family grave and here we have Reverend Thomas Cosby Fulton, M.A.D.D. Uh, died 1942, devoted 58 years to the church in Manchuria, China. He just wasn't round the corner. And his son, Dr. Thomas Fleming Stevenson Fulton, or was it his son? I don't know. 26 February 1887 to January 1975. And that's, uh, that's the, the man who founded uh, Fleming Fulton uh, School. And here's another uh, notable Fulton, Dr. Thomas Terence Fulton, MD, FRCP, OBE, 1921 to 2009, dedicated physician, husband, father. And I've just stumbled across this grave. And this is uh, the loving wife of Terence. The Fulton family grave. I'm just leaving the cemetery now. I've just been amazed at the number of uh, children's graves I've come across. It's very, very sad. And I've been amazed at the numbers of um, at the, the, the names the surnames on the headstones, a lot of them are not uh, Northern Ireland names or Irish names. They're, they're, they're from all over the place and, and a lot of strange names. And uh, it's, uh, I'm afraid the, the sky is weeping and it matches my mood here because it's a uh, you know, there's, there's an awful lot of sadness here. There were lives that were taken so, so young and they never had a chance. And uh, fathers losing sons to war and mothers. Can you imagine the tears? So maybe the weather suits my mood. But uh, come and see this for yourself. Fascinating place, full of history. Full of history. And it closes at four. <laughs>